Hello everyone, it's your Peacekeeper, and it's time for the next video in our How to Play series on the Pan-Asian Destroyer line. This is the Tier 8 Sien Yang, and the Sien Yang was a Gleaves-class destroyer transferred to the Republic of China, it's Taiwan, in 1955 after uh, it ended its service with the U.S. Navy. The Gleaves class destroyer that it was in the U.S. Navy was the USS Rodman, or DD-456. The Gleaves class destroyer is essentially a Bob Benson class destroyer. The difference between the two class of destroyers was almost purely internal in nature. The first six ships of the Gleaves class were ordered with simplified machinery, while the remainder of the 60 ships were ordered with the Benson's original equipment, which would have made them basically identical. However, prior to their completion, these ships were modified with newer, high-pressure and temperature boilers to improve efficiency. The only visible differences externally between the Gleaves class and the Benson class are that the Benson class had flat-sided funnels, while the Gleaves had round funnels, basically making these ships identical. USS Rodman was converted into a minesweeper in 1944 and lost her rearmost turret in favor of minesweeping gear. She had also lost her torpedo tubes during this conversion. Prior to being turned over to the Republic of China's Navy, that's the Taiwan Navy, she was returned to the configuration that she was when she launched with the four 5-inch guns and two quintuple torpedo tubes. As far as service history is concerned, Sien Yang served in the Republic of China's Navy from 1955 to 1969. She became notorious for running aground and into other ships and was nicknamed, I'm going to butcher this, Gan Yang, which means ram in Chinese. After running around, sorry, after running aground, and being severely damaged in 1969, her name and pennant number were reassigned to the USS Mackam DD-458, which was also a Gleaves-class destroyer, as repairing the former Rodman would have been too expensive, and uh, the uh, Mackam served well into the 1970s at that point. In terms of the in-game playstyle, Sien Yang will be very familiar to those who play Sims often. Boasting high speed, good maneuverability, and concealment, she is only let down really by two attributes. Only having four guns and relatively poor accuracy means she's not very well suited for engaging enemy destroyers. It also seems like the guns don't do a whole lot of damage, and I don't remember Benson's guns being really this bad, nor any of the U.S. guns being quite this bad. But it just seems like you just get shatter after shatter after shatter after shatter. The other thing that lets her down is that her torpedoes are very, very, very slow. At 55 knots, even with the 9.2 kilometer range, it takes forever for torpedoes to get there. So the, the torpedoes are best used at what would be considered suicidal ranges. I don't mean like point blank range, but what I do mean is like, you want to be right at the edge of your detection when you launch them because ships have so much time to react that any slight movement at all will completely throw off your ability to land torpedoes. Now, having said that, if you are particularly good with Benson's torpedoes, which is what these are, uh, you can kind of make them work. But me personally, I'm just not a huge fan of, of the, the super slow torpedoes. They are very Sims-esque, and of course, only having four guns is also Sims-esque. While the AA complement is strong, it should be noted that for not having five 5-inch five gun mounts, she does not gain defensive fire like Benson does when she loses the gun mount. Instead, she actually gets radar in place of smoke. I don't particularly recommend using the radar, as the ship is not an adept hunter of destroyers, and... While playing with the radar can have its advantage, it's short-lived and short-ranged, and in my opinion, the smoke is overall a much better way to play the ship. It just allows you to escape as well as sit in the smoke and shoot at things with relative impunity. But overall, uh, you know, it's not a bad ship, it's just that Benson is better in almost every measure. Benson can give up one gun and gain defensive fire to ward off carriers, or it can keep all five guns and be an adept destroyer hunter. Xian Yang gains neither defensive fire or have, doesn't have access to five guns, 
So that said, while the ship is a strong torpedo boat, it still really isn't that good of a ship. I mean, it's not bad. It's not great. It's just kind of, it's there. You know, it is It is what it is. Overall, uh, uh, if you gave me a choice of any of the Tier 8 destroyers, uh, I would definitely choose Benson over Sien Yang. So let's look at some of the stats. Let me get these all opened up here. She has 18,300 hit points. That's going to be without survivability. No, that is with survivability expert and i would highly recommend that at these higher tiers just to help you survive that gunfight just a little bit longer uh, up to 20 millimeters of armor main battery consists of four five inch 38s mark 30s 12 and a half kilometer firing range 101 meter dispersion though and that makes shooting at that 12 and a half kilometer range frustrating 3.3 second reload time which feels more like five seconds but, hey, 5.3 second 180 degree turn time is cooking. Max HE shell damage of 1,800, 5% fire chance, 2,100 shell damage if you manage to get a Citadel on an enemy cruiser, and uh, 792 meters per second for, you know, those suborbital shells as you're firing at 12.5 kilometers. In terms of torpedo tubes, we have two quintuple launchers, 9.2 kilometer range, 55 at knot speed. They do 16,633 damage, have a 110 second reload, 6 second 180 degree turn time, and 0.7 kilometer detection range. So we actually lose a tenth of a kilometer, but the torpedoes are unbelievably slow. AA guns, six single 20 millimeters, two quad 40s. The two quad 40s are mounted uh, where we would hope to find another turret if this ship had uh, launched in its original... Con well, this ship launched in it with only four guns, uh, but the early Gleaves all had five, like the Bensons. Uh, the maximum speed, 37.5 knots, 570 meter turning circle radius, 3.5 second rudder shift time. Detection range by sea, 5.8k. Detection range by air, 2.9 in terms of upgrades, main armaments mod 1 is the staple here for the 20% reduction in the risk of your main battery being incapacitated, as well as your torpedo tubes being incapacitated. 50% increase to both your main battery and torpedo tube hit point pools, as well as a 20% reduction in them getting, um, sorry, in the time it takes to repair them. In the second slot, I am running Propulsion Systems Mod 1 for the 20% reduction in the risk of the engine being incapacitated, as well as a 20% reduction in the time it takes to repair the engines. You could also run Steering Gears Mod 1, which is the same as Propulsion Mod 1, except for for your steering gear. At this tier, Damage Control Systems Mod 1 is not really a, a viable upgrade here. Um, and which of these two you choose just depends entirely upon how you play. Uh, which you hate losing more. For me, I hate losing my propulsion. Can always maneuver with the uh, last stand, but crawling away at slow speeds just doesn't do it for me. So I'd rather not lose my engine if at all possible. In the third slot, I am running Aiming Systems Mod 1 for the 7% reduction in the dispersion of your main battery, as well as the 20% increase in the torpedo tube traverse speed. Uh, obviously, we don't have to worry about secondaries in this. At this tier, at this uh, upgrade slot, I, I don't think AA Guns Mod 2 is real viable. Kind of like the German Destroyers in this regard, they don't really have uh, access. They don't have access to defensive fire at all, and they don't really have that great of AA. I mean, it's it's better than nothing. It will shoot down aircraft, but buffing it further really isn't all that useful, especially without defensive fire. And we, the turrets already turn stupid fast. There's no reason to make them turn faster. In the fourth slot, I am running Propulsion Systems Mod 2, which increases engine power when the ship first starts moving, as well as a 50% reduction in the time it takes to reach full power when accelerating. This really only impacts the ship in the negative 6 to 6 knot range, and uh, really helps it while sitting in smoke. You can dodge torpedoes much easier if you have enough warning. You could also run Steering Gears Mod 2 for the 20% reduction in the rudder shift time, However, I really don't think that this is going to be necessary. Three and a half seconds is pretty good on a destroyer, and the part rudder turning ability of this ship is very good. So, I no real reason to run this, in my opinion. Of course, Damage Control Systems Mod 2, 
you have such short fire time, and if you get hit by torpedoes, you might as well be dead if you don't have your repair party up. In the last slot, I am running Concealment Systems Mod 1 for the 5% increase in the dispersion of shells fired at you, as well as the 10% reduction in the detection range. Uh, I mentioned briefly that you could trade smoke for radar. So the radar is seven and a half kilometers. It's only active for 15 seconds and has a two minute reload time. That's with premium consumables. Um, <laughs> 103 minute reload time without premium consumables. You can kind of see how the smoke is a little bit more useful. Seven and a half kilometers only available for 15 seconds. That gives you about four shots. At an enemy destroyer, three if you're, uh, you know, not pointed directly at him right away. Not terribly useful. Really not. So I personally don't recommend running the radar. It's just not worth the uh, loss of smoke, in my opinion. All right, enough of talking about the ship in port. Let's go look at it in a battle video. All right, so Xian Yang being in tier 8 is going to see a lot of tier 10 matches. You'll occasionally see some tier 6 matches as well, but uh, I, I, I find that tier 8 sees a lot more tier 10 matches than it does tier 6 matches. So don't hold your breath too much for those. Uh, this match is going to be a 7 to 9 match, if I remember correctly. The game will ever low. There it goes. Yep, 7 to 9. And uh, lots of battleships, but really wasn't a factor, believe it or not. Map is Shatter, Shard, Shatter, whichever one of those two, Shatter, there it is. <laughs> uh, generally speaking on this map, I tend to go towards either A or C, depending on which side I'm on. However, this time uh, the team wanted to shake it up a little bit and crash B. So we'll, we'll put on our cheeky breaky hats and we will rush B and go from there. Now... The ship isn't particularly well suited for destroyer hunting, remember, so uh, not having help with a, from another destroyer could be a disaster. There's the horn. It sounds kind of like a train whistle. Not nearly as much of a train whistle as some of the German destroyers do. The German destroyers definitely have a, a, a true train whistle. But you can see the guns turn really quickly. Torpedo tubes turn really quickly. And... Uh, there's not really uh, not really any reason to to worry about what side your guns are on unless you're just absolutely low on hit points and need to. So uh, we're going to head, like I said, uh, the team right now is deciding to go to B. I was originally planning to see if I could sneak A, and then I realized, nah, we don't have the ability to really fight any of the enemy destroyers. So this is probably for the better because we just don't have the, the raw DPM to really take on those destroyers. So we will go towards B with our Kiziki, uh, AA destroyer that is lacking defensive fire. Wargaming, why? <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, this is actually very unusual. I don't usually go towards a B. Uh, like I said, that going to B can be kind of fraught with issues, especially in a destroyer, especially at the early part of the game. You don't know what destroyers are going to go to be. You don't know what kind of cruisers are going to go to be. And one thing I found is that uh, Des Moines tend to like B a lot. Atlanta's very close second. Why? Probably because destroyers go there all the time. So we're going to go on the south side of this island. I was really hoping that maybe we would catch a spot on a battleship or something I could launch torpedoes at. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, none available currently. So we'll just go ahead and we'll keep chugging along here and help Akizuki with the cap. So the first enemy spotted is a Missouri. I'm assuming that's Akizuki spotting the Missouri, which eh, might have responded, might have had a, an instinctual... Ooh, Atlanta. Yee. All right, so... One nice thing about deepwater torpedoes is we don't have to worry about, uh, we don't really have to worry about hitting enemy or friendly destroyers. We don't have to worry about hitting enemy destroyers either. So we launched one set at the marker, basically. The second set we did not launch at the marker. We launched it at, uh, basically the, the island there. Um, 
kind of an interesting place to launch it, but I was totally expecting this Atlanta to go broadside and not just beach himself, but since he beached himself, we'll just go ahead and we'll we'll chug along here at a quarter speed and and well, that didn't work out nearly as well as I thought it was going to. So I guess we'll just go ahead and <laughs> pray we can get some shell hits. It's not working. Oh. We got incoming ourselves, but we're not spotted by radar. Well, he's backing up. There's the Missouri, so we'll just engage the Missouri. Smoke is almost done. We've got 1,782 damage so far, but uh, shatters, shatters. Even more shatters. Still yet, even more shatters. Oh, look, 297 damage. That's what I was talking about. Really anemic. Ooh, those are getting close. And he hit me twice. What a jerk. <laughs> we're just going to go ahead and we're going to hover... In a little bit different place here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and just bail completely out of this. Really not any real reason to hang around. We've got 21 seconds until our torpedoes are back up. And my thought process here was, well, if I were their destroyers, I'd probably, uh, well, I would definitely not make a rush for B, but... I'd probably go towards the south, maybe one or two come to the north, like a Yugamo or something like that. Some some torpedo destroyer to try and get angles on stuff, but, um, well, you'll see. <laughs> so we got Richelieu here. This is going to be important. Richelieu, where are you? There you are. So we're going to launch, uh, yep, we're going to launch those torpedoes there. And, oh, look, we're detected. Bye! Uh, Z-23. And here we're going to get to see this ship do destroyer hunting tactics. And, well, uh, 1,600 damage. Okay, so we're, we're getting some decent hits in there. Well, that was not a decent set of hits. That was also not a decent set of hits. It's not like the Z-23 is particularly well armored. That was 1,800. That was okay. Oh, torpedoes got launched behind. Who would have thought... There's the Yugamo that I thought would be over here. Uh, managed to get two shell hits, but only 594 damage? That's kind of annoying. The Z-23, and now we're no longer detected, so that always helps. Remember, remember, the 5th of November, the gunpowder plot and treason. Um, <laughs> that, that won't really matter too much. Ooh, torpedoes, looks like we're going to get at least one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I'll take that. 62,000 damage. We are up to 62,000 damage at this point. We're going to sail away from the Z-23, at least initially. We do have a Friedrich de Gross here that's helping us, so maybe we should probably go over there. That way the you know Z-23 doesn't get any ideas about possibly uh, you know, torpedoing him or something. Uh, that that uh, Richelieu, you know, 20,000 20, hit points left. Served him right. <laughs> Those are probably the luckiest torpedoes ever. Important to note, only two floods out of that entire ordeal. Two floods. Are you kidding me? Well, two two hits there. You can see we're not getting terribly lucky. We're getting... Oh, there was five hits. Ooh. Look at how slow the damage is adding up. Meanwhile, he's got help from his team and... We got help from no one because the Friedrich de Gross is not currently in view. Haha, the Z-23 tried doing something I like to do. In fact, we did it at the same exact time. The only difference is, is he's not shooting at me, but I am shooting at him. And, well, do we charge or don't we charge? Do we charge or don't we charge? Yep, we're going to have to turn around. <laughs> oh, Yugamo. Oi. Leave me alone. Well, we're going to pop our smoke a little bit here. This is going to help us disengage just a smidge. And we avoided the torpedoes. Quite handily, might I add. Like I said, this is going to help us disengage a little bit from this Yugamo. Um, again, not, not overly worried about the Yugamo. Wow, wow that actually kind of hurt. Now we're going to turn and we're going to gun down the Yugamo. And this is one of the areas where, uh, well, normally a Japanese destroyer captain would be, like, running. But he's not interested. We know that that hipper is coming around the bend, so we, we're going to launch some torpedoes. 
See if maybe we can't get lucky with those. We are going to have to turn away here and pick a broadside to something because uh, eight inch guns tend to hurt. Keeping calm and WASDing. Yugamo, ooh, just narrowly escaping torpedoes from the, uh, the Z-23 there. Switch to AP just to kind of see if maybe the AP would do better damage and it does not. So don't. <laughs> just stick to the HE. And he's got 99 hit points. He's got 99 problems, and being alive isn't one of them. Our torpedoes missed the hipper, so now it's time to engage the WASD hacks fully. Uh, yep, there's one mutt dodged salvo. And two dodged salvos, three dodged salvos. Uh, that one was not a dodged salvo. That kind of hurt. There's a fourth salvo dodged from the hipper. We're almost to our detection range. Almost there. 5.8. And there's like the seventh salvo or sixth salvo dodged. Okay, so now we can actually go back to doing what we should probably have done earlier. I was really hoping the torpedoes would come up a lot sooner. But they're not going to. Nope. Not going to. Uh, 22 seconds, just way too much time here. Could have been doing some damage to this hipper. I would have deployed my smoke. Was really concerned about him possibly uh, using hydro, but he's far enough out now that that's no longer a concern. We will go ahead and we will just engage him. He's got fires on him. 297 damage, not really doing a whole lot. Again, another 297 damage. Probably hitting a little too far forward. We're going to switch to AP. Oh, there's another fire. I bet he's appreciating that right about now. <laughs> switch into that AP. You know, now we're starting to rack up about 1,300 damage. Seeing a couple of uh, three, 4,000 total set per... No, not three, 4,000. About 2,000 to 2,500 damage in a complete salvo of four. Continuing to engage. He's got... Very few hit points left. Ooh, 551. And we got the kill. Excellent. Okay, so um, he's down. How about uh, Pensacola? Pensacola has no radar. So we, we are safe to engage this Pensacola in the smoke. Going to deploy smoke where I think he's going to go. Um, it's certainly where I would go if I were in his, in his shoes. And, well, <laughs> he's going the other way. If in doubt, go broadside to all of the enemies. That that helps in a Pensacola, apparently. Launching a set of Torp short, not probably going to matter. It is a Pensacola, after all. We have two kills. We're up to 105,000 damage. And, oh, ah, nope. Eh. Well, this match is still looking very, very interesting. That's for sure. So, destroyer-wise, Akizuki, south of B there, we've got ourselves some battleships still floating around. Richelieu, that Richelieu is still alive. After I dumped him with 20 hit point, uh, 20,000 hit points left, the beginning of this match, he's, uh, <laughs> he's still alive somehow. There's torpedoes going out from that uh, Yugamo. Maybe he'll get him. So now we can go back and we can try and cap A, and that's what we're going to try and do while the Akizuki is uh, on the other side of the the match. And yep, there goes the Richelieu. I really thought he was going to die a lot sooner than that, but he somehow managed to survive. Monarch Friedrich de Gross, we'll just go cap A. Uh, if we're lucky, this Monarch will come and play with us. If not, uh, well, that would be unfortunate. <laughs> so, you can kind of see how the ship plays. Um, not the strongest. Like, I wish it had the fifth gun. I really do. If it did, it would be a very solid destroyer. You wouldn't give up anything to get deep water torpedoes, which really aren't an advantage. It, uh, you know, Benson's torpedoes aren't that not stealthy. I don't know what, the, what they are off the top of my head, but uh, they're really not that bad as far as stealth is concerned. And, uh, you know, if you play him right, Benson is is very, very strong. So 
Let's look it up here while I've got it up. 1.1k, so we're only gaining four tenths of a kilometer of detection over it. So that you're going to have a little less uh, detection on these torpedoes. You're going to have a little less reaction time, but they're still really slow. So the reaction time isn't like near zero like I would like it to be. <laughs> so... We do have 106,221 damage. That's always uh, a fun sign. And our Akizuki dies. And our Yugamo is nearly dead. And I and the Sien Yang are also nearly dead. That is a full health Friedrich de Grosse. The Missouri is nearly dead, so that helps. Oop, Yugamo plops out a set of four torpedoes. Well, that ought to be interesting. Those are pretty close range torps. Yep. <laughs> Detonated him. <Whew. laughs> All right. Well, Yugamo, you should probably come back towards me. I say probably, but uh, I just don't know that he's going to. Where's that monarch? Yo, right there. And didn't get the opportunity to launch anything. Of course not. Why would he? Now, originally I thought this Monarch would, uh, you know, charge into the cap here. Knowing that they, they're they in need of points, I'm basically dead. Uh, there's no reason for him not to. But, yep, yeah, he's not going to. <laughs> he's just going to keep sailing away. Whatever. And with only, uh, you know, a couple seconds left, we're just going to go ahead and engage him. It's really not that big of a deal if we end up losing or dying. We can't get the solo cap before the end. And this is the end battle screen for Sien Yang. So, 106,221 damage, two kills, one cap, one assist. 2,570 base XP. You can look here at the detailed report and see a lot of torpedo damage. Not much in fires and floods. And there's a credits and XP screen. So overall, Benson, I think, is a much better destroyer for Tier 8. And the, the torpedoes are much more useful. It has an extra gun. That's always nice. I, I just, I prefer Benson over this ship any day of the week. But it's not a bad ship to play. Anyway, I'm your Peacekeeper. Like, comment, subscribe if you haven't already. And thanks for watching.